Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Olson and you've tuned in to the Brave Files podcast. As you can tell, I am not Heather Vickery. I'm the guy behind the scenes that makes everything sound just a little bit better. I'm the audio engineer. In today's episode, Heather talks with internationally recognized strategist, clarity coach, TEDx organizer, speaker, and author Dolores Hirschman about how she was thrown into becoming the breadwinner for her family of six. While this experience was truly terrifying, Dolores knew that the only true failure would be in not doing everything she could to provide for her family. In the episode, Heather and Dolores discuss how often others see our strengths before we do, and sometimes our dreams appear in unexpected ways, through the back door of life, and no matter what, you're always stronger than you think you are. Before we start the show, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? If so, I invite you to join me, Heather, and the rest of the Podcast Power Academy team for our free monthly live Q&A session. So you want to start a podcast. This is a casual conversation designed to help you finally get that podcast off the ground. And in case you're wondering, my role in Podcast Power Academy is, you guessed it, the audio engineer. I'm here to get your sound in tip-top shape and to have you feeling as comfortable as possible going into the initial records. You can learn more about Podcast Power Academy and register for our free live session by visiting www.podcastpoweracademy.com. We hope to see you there. All right, now let's start the show. Clarity, action, impact. This is Heather Vickery, and you're listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. When we choose bravely in big and small ways, it powerfully elevates our lives. I hope these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement of courageous living that enriches both our lives and our communities. And if you enjoy the show, I ask you to please share it with others. Maybe think of someone who you want to choose bravely right alongside you. Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Brave Files podcast. This is Heather Vickery, and I'm so glad to have you here with me. Author Colin Powell is famous for saying the simple but true fact of life is that you become like those with whom you choose to associate for the good and the bad. And I met today's guest in a room full of incredible, powerful, empowered women entrepreneurs who are seriously crushing it day after day. If you're curious, the event was Allie Brown's Iconic. But Dolores Hirschman didn't become this incredible entrepreneur by accident. Her story is one of serious intention after she was forced to become the primary breadwinner for her family. Today, Dolores, who is the host of Clarity TV, is an internationally recognized strategist, clarity coach, TEDx organizer, speaker, and author. Wow. Dolores, welcome to the Brave Files. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Oh, it's fun to read your bio. I mean, it is just exciting. It was, Iconic was exciting just to be in the room with all of these women who, you know, lift each other up. I, I think as women... We have been taught, and we're getting out of this. We've been taught like we can't all be successful at once. Like you gotta, you gotta push somebody down because there's only room for so many women up top, right? Yes. And that that is changing. And in a room like we were in together for iconic, that is definitely not the mode of of operation. By no means. It was like my lifting you. I know will lift me up. Absolutely. So I love that. I love that energy. And I'm so grateful to have you here with us today. So thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. So can you share with our listeners, let's start by talking about wh what major thing happened in your life that completely transitioned and, and you had to become the primary caregiver, primary breadwinner for your family. Yeah. So, you know, I've been lucky to, I'm a mother of four. I'm originally from Argentina. That's where my accent is from. Um, and I was lucky for many years. I'm grateful to my husband that I was able to be in exploration mode and, and really find my path. But it was about uh, four years ago or so that my husband was having problems in his work and family business um, issues. And literally all of a sudden, within 30 days, we knew that that month was going to be his last paycheck. And all of a sudden, I was in charge of 
literally the mortgage. <laughs> and it's, the ter- it's literally terrifying. It, 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 yeah, and it's not like, oh, what is the breadwinner? I mean, it, it means that there's a bill at the end of the month with an amount that we know that is coming because it's been coming for 10 years and called the coming. mortgage. Yeah, um, the mortgage, yeah. <laughs> and, yes. and, and the food bills and all that stuff. Um, and that there will be no income to cover that. I mean, with a family of four at that time, all my kids were home. Nobody was in college. You know, it's, it's, we were doing really well, but we were not doing so well that we were saving a lot of money because we were Mm. in the, in the moment of our life where you were investing a lot in the kids and their experiences and their activities. But to make it short, you know, that month, and it was December, 2016, I spent that month going to bed, uh, crying myself to sleep, waking up crying and saying to myself, I can't, I can't, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I have a passion project. Yes, I'm doing well. Yes, I'm, I have clients. Yes, I'm making some money, but this is not like I can't sell more shoes to pay the mortgage. Like it was like, like yeah. it's, it's, it's just not, 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 I'm a coach. That's not how it works. Right. And like I help people so I can't. I can put I the, in my mind, Heather. There was a disconnect between my capacity to help people and having that be the main source of financial safety for my family. Absolutely. Somehow, in my mind, it felt wrong, and it also felt that I was not going to be able to take that role. That that was not my role as a woman or as a mother or as an Argentinian. I don't know, <laughs> but, but for whatever reason, it just I just no, I can't. And then January 1st, 2017, I woke up and I and I was in full intellectual knowledge that I had no choice. Like it was either I showed up and I just tried. Yeah. Or that things What's the worst going, thing that can happen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or that if I didn't, then there was a very clear path of what would happen. You know, eventually we'd have to refinance our mortgage. Mm-hmm. Like, just like what are the steps, right? Uh, get the kids out of the schools that they're in, maybe change neighborhoods, maybe downsize, whatever. This goes on of what is possible to undo your life so that you can accommodate to a different life. Yep. And I was, I didn't want to do that. Like I didn't want to, do, at least here's the thing. I didn't want to go there without a fight. Yes. And so that when, when that was incredibly clear to me that I wasn't asked to provide for my family with no source of income. I had a little business or a small business. I was making some money, not enough for the family, but but enough as a platform. And all I was asked to do is turn up the volume. Yeah. And and it was it was not so much, it was more about who I can't like it, it's hard to explain, Heather, but it was more like I've always wanted to go big, I've always wanted to play bigger. <laughs> and that day and my husband said, Look, I'll take care of everything, like the kids, the this, the that. You've always wanted to play bigger. Go. And I and I remember looking at him and saying, I I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just talk, honey. It was just talk. Like I was just dreaming. <laughs> you know, and how many times probably the people listening to you to this podcast is like You know, what you dream, because when the dream comes knocking in your door, which my dream came knocking Uh in the door in the form. Be careful what you ask for, right? (laughs) In the form of this kind of setback, if you want to look at it that way, it was really my my dream was coming wrapped in that setback box. And I could, I knew that we would be okay if I tried. I just, I I, it triggered my fear of success. Doesn't make any sense oh, what yeah. I'm saying. No, it does but, though. It does but make it sense. Went right into this part of me know that I can do this, and what will, what if, what's going to happen if I'm successful? Am I going to be exposed? Will I get hurt? Whatever conversation was around that topic is what came up. So mm-hmm. basically, there was a full. What is it? Um, you know, in in the. Um, inflammation yeah. <laughs> of all of my sabotage conversations. All of them yeah. showed up. They all showed up, except they didn't win. So what What happened? What did you change to embrace it, to dial it up, to shut the voices down? Because, girl, you did it in a mm-hmm. big, big way. So mm-hmm. how? 
Great question. <laughs> yeah. So there's, as I, as you know, as as we're having this conversation, there's obviously a tactical part. We're not going to talk about that right now, but the tactical part, the taking action part. That's what my 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 words are: clarity, action, impact. The taking action part is a consequence of something that happens inside. And for me, it's always around clarity. And it's mm-hmm. it, it was for me to to really stop reacting, give myself a moment of peace and 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 be with what there was and gain clarity around that this inflammation of saboteurs that all of a sudden they had this big meeting and say we're going to stop this right now <laughs> yep. and so i went into the meeting with them uh the higher self right i went into the meeting with them and i listened to all of them and i wrote it down and I'm, obviously i'm speaking metaphorically but what does this look like this looks like long walks without yeah. any music yep. uh, or company so that I'm with my head. It means back to my journal. It means morning pages. It means crying um, at night. It means talking to friends. It means calling my mom crying and, and playing victim because I knew she could hold that space. Mm-hmm. But then hanging up with my mom and playing like I could do it. It was a little bit of fake it to make it. All of those things were part of it because the day I committed that I wouldn't unravel our life. Because to be honest, Heather, my worst vision was, and I know my my friends, when I shared this, they laughed at me because, you know, that's ridiculous. But I literally had this vision of living under a bridge with my four children and the dog. Sure. Because things can turn upside down so quickly if we're yeah. not conscious and aware. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, w- would that vision ever realize? Probably not. I have a family in Argentina. They have big houses. Like, you know, <laughs> someone will buy a plane ticket, like whatever. And there was an right. eject button. But that vision kept me going in that, is there anything? And I, I kept asking myself, okay, that vision I don't want. What is it that I yeah. can do about it? Not yeah. anybody else, but what is it that I can do about it? Well, I can wake up an hour earlier every morning. I can call three people every day and say, who do you know that needs a coach? Yep. Um, I can call my clients and say, I would appreciate your referral. This is my situation, and I would love to serve more people. And literally, that's what I did. Yeah. And that first month, I and I'll give you some numbers. I was making $10,000 a month. I made twenty. Yeah, And that was the magic number that I knew we needed to pay our bills. And that was my foundation. And I kept growing from there. That's so cool. And it all makes so much sense to me. It's the similar type of work that I do, but it's it's easier said than done (laughs) for most folks. But what I love about the way you tell this story is first and foremost, you have to decide that you want a different story. Yep, 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 yep. And then once you decided it, you were like, okay, I know what I can't control. What can I control? And then you just start slowly and systematically doing one of those things after the other until there's actual change and growth. Yeah. And and you got it. You know, you nailed it in, in the head slowly and yeah. systematically. It wasn't a... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna call everybody I know in one day and then <laughs> and then and then sit and wait. It, you yeah. know, that's spaghetti to the wall. No, I'm going to nurture, I'm going to reach out, I'm going to be present, I'm gonna maybe do, I don't know, more posts on social media, go more networking meetings. I hustled. Yeah. Yeah, you totally hustled. So the whole time you're doing this, are you hmm. aware? of how incredibly brave it is? Or were you just in survival mode? I was in survival mode, 100%. Yeah. I had a dear, dear, I mean, first of all, my clients are the best people in the world. And I so agree, mine are too. My, especially my, my long-term clients, especially one that literally we would coach. She had her session and then at the end she would say, because she knew the situation, she said, how are you doing? Yeah, you I love those clients. You know where <laughs> Um, you're on that moment in your life where it doesn't take right. Someone says, how are you doing? And that you just can't hold it. Even if you want to be professional, even if you want to hold it, you can't. Yeah. So she would ask, how are you doing? And I would fall apart. And then she will hold me uh, metaphorically for uh, 10, 15 minutes. She's a coach herself and listen. 
And and she actually, it was funny because at the time, this particular client was going through a hypnosis training herself. And she's like, can I, can I, can I, oh, can fun. you be my guinea pig? Yeah, I <laughs> and love I'm that. Like, that's fun. Yeah. And she's like, what do you want? I want to survive this thing. I want to get to this goal because I need to pay the mortgage. Okay. So she was doing hypnosis practices with me. I need, I need her phone number. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do that. Um, so it was, it was so, there were a lot of angels. Yeah around and I allow myself to see them, to welcome them, to embrace them. Yeah. And I was still dancing between I'm a rock star and I'm a victim. Yep. Uh, pretty much every minute of the day. And I I honestly it took me six months into this process, six months into this year to look back and say, oh my God, we are doing it. Uh, we're not done, but we're doing it. Yeah. And truth be told, Heather, it's not all, you know, rainbows and roses. Oh, you know, yeah. Six months into this, I had I hit a little bit of a wall of burnout. Sure. Um, well, you'd been going nonstop like the Energizer Bunny. Exactly. Yeah. So six months into it, I had to pause and we were kind of out of, we had more clarity in our all situation, my husband's situation, and you know, it's actually been a long process. We're in a lawsuit with my father-in-law, oh, and uh, and I'm it's sorry. still going as of today. We're just in a different position, but um, so there's a lot of you know financial and 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 work changes and emotional because it's the grandfather of my children, and you feel attacked by your own family member. Yeah. Um, so. But all of that, um, at six months into it, I hit a wall and I was like burned out. And again, I had to pause and say, okay, what is a sustainable version of this? <laughs> what does that look like? So that's when I hired my first assistant, for example. Um, I hadn't given myself the luxury of, of even getting help. So it's been, it is, whenever you go into any of these changes, and it doesn't have to be big to have a transition like this, it's not that you overcome something and now everything is smooth. It's a consistent check-in with yourself of, am I in the way I'm being today? Is this being sustainable? A. Yeah. Is this being fulfilling? That's question B. And is this being something I want to have more of in the future? Mm, I love and, that. And there's different layers. Like if it's not sustainable, like, okay, go into trash mode. Yeah. Um, if and, being, and being honest about it. Like call yeah. yourself on your BS and go, no, that's not, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. B, if it's not fulfilling, then, you know, it's not trash mode. It's a little bit of tweaks. And if it's someone that you fully want to spend your time, like you want to spend your time with that version of you for the rest of your life, if that's not true, then again, another shift or tweak. Not in neither situation you're throwing the baby in the bathwater. You're just checking in. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. There's so many great things that you shared. Uh, just to go back for a second, I I really love that you were A, um, honest and vulnerable about particularly that one client. You know, I I've been in that position myself and I really, I want everyone listening to understand that mm. just because you are an expert or an authority <laughs> in one area does not mean you you don't ever struggle. It doesn't mean that sometimes you don't need to be the student. Uh, and I, I give so much credit to your client who was able to be on this call with you and pay you for your expertise and get everything she needed from you and still no, you mm -hmm. were a human being that needed, had your own needs. And so for everybody could just take that away. Mm -hmm. That is to me so brave to, to be able to admit that we're not always strong. We don't always have all the answers. We do need support. Yeah. And, and that you can be hold by the people you hold. Yeah. I love that. One of the things, one mantra that I did, uh, that I forgot to mention every morning, I would brush my teeth, look myself in the mirror. And I would say, I support the people that support my family. I support the people, I support my mm. family. And that was a big one because whenever I would go into a sales call, I was like, how can I really honestly help this person out? How can I make a difference in that world? Yeah. Because if I only focused on that, I knew that the result was that I would get to do that work and in doing so, they would support my family. That's right. And I always say that uh, my my coach and mentor taught me 
that money is a byproduct of service, which is exactly yep. what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. And the goal is never the money. No. Money doesn't mean anything if you stockpile it in your room and don't do anything with it. Money helps you care for your family. It helps you support other people. It helps you reinvest in businesses mm -hmm. where you're helping others grow. Um, and so making sure we're focused on why we're doing the thing, why we're serving the clients, what our goals are there, and not just on quote unquote making money is so important. Yeah. 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 Because the truth is that you don't hang out with your bank account. You don't, right? I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I mean, of course, it makes things easier, but um, but it's about, and that's where my third word goes, impact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, clarity, action, impact. And so the clarity of where I was standing and who I needed to be allowed me to take the action I needed to take to support my family. But the flip side of my action was the impact that my clients can and have in the world. Yeah. I love that. There's so much goodness in all of that. Uh, one of the things that I haven't yet done and would very much like to do is be a TEDx speaker. How do mm -hmm. you get involved in TEDx and, and how did that shift your business? Yeah, so that happened before my husband's situation. And and I'm again, I'm grateful because at the time I was running my business, being a mom of my four kids, and I didn't have the pressure of, of financial performing so I could play. And so at the time I was, you know, I was in that, you know how we said the triage or the fulfillment or the longstanding mm -hmm. being. So at that point I was doing fine, but I had a fulfillment conundrum. Um, there was this thing about my business that I loved, but there was something missing and I didn't feel fulfilled. Yeah. And so I asked myself, what would I do for free all day long? And the answer to that question was I would hang out with people with really big ideas. And I had already been part of a TEDx as a, as a team member and an opportunity came up, you know, sometimes you start an exploration in your head and the universe shows you the way, right? Yep. Um, and I listened and someone had asked me, would you lead this a TEDx here in the community? And I said, yes. And long story short, I became the, the TEDx organizer for this event. And, um, and so in that process, I learned a lot. A, I learned how... Even seasoned speakers, because we had hundreds of people who applied mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. um, how only very few of them were really clear about their core idea and how to communicate it. Yeah. And most of them, hundreds of them, did not. That didn't mean that they didn't have a message or didn't mean that they couldn't become a great speaker on our stage. Is that as a volunteer organization, a volunteer organizer, I didn't have that much time to go finding, go digging into this person's work to find if it was a good match for my stage or not. I needed to read an application and know good fit or not good fit. Yeah, yeah. And so if someone is wanting to get on a TEDx stage, the first thing I always say is like, make sure you can share your the, the big idea behind your work in one sentence or six words or or don't bother because you're going to apply, apply, apply with no results um, mm. because it's such a competition and you're applying to a body of people who are volunteering to put an event. They just don't have time to dig into every application. They're not mean people. They just don't have the time. No. Yeah. That's so valuable. So you, you need to do the work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's such an important thing for people. We have so many people who listen who would like to be on that stage one day. Um, mm -hmm. So this is such a great takeaway. Did you have any really great resources for people to help them do the work more effectively? One of the things that happened in the process of being a TEDx organizer and realizing that, A, that was a problem, and B, I loved solving it. <laughs> nice. At that time, Masters in Clarity didn't exist, the, the name of my company. It, I was operating under my Dolores Hirschman name. And so the volunteering for that clarified for me the work that I do today. So um, if I don't, if you don't mind me saying, is that I no, help people do. clarify their message. Yeah. And then we now have a service that we've, we've created a few years ago because even when we were teaching everything I knew on how to get on a stage to all of our clients, they didn't follow through. They just didn't do the research. They didn't do the applications. They just 
didn't do the full work. Very few of them did. Some did, but most of them didn't. So now we actually have a full concierge service where we help you clarify your positioning and your idea. We help you with your talk, and then we will do the work of researching the right stages for you and filling out the applications, following up, et cetera. I love that. Yeah. Everybody needs everybody needs that. <laughs> well, yeah, not everybody, and, and, but people in this industry need it. Yeah. Yeah. And we we consistently are putting people on stage. I think there's two people that I just got an email this morning that uh, two of our clients just got selected. I love that. Because it is a good time for that. So so I have my my first client on this, which is the reason why I do this, because someone came to me and said, Can you do this for me? And I said, I don't do that. He said, can you please try? <laughs> <laughs> try and harder, said, Dolores. I, I said, well, this is what I charge an hour. And he said, okay. And he was an is, he's a doctor out of in Kansas. And he said, I just been doing research. I'm a genetist. I have an idea worth sharing. I don't want to write a book. I've been publishing the medical journals, blah, blah, blah. I just want this message out, period. Yeah. And so we we did that. We worked together. He spoke on a stage. This is four years ago, and his talk has been viewed over three million times. I love so that. his goal uh, of sharing a message that can impact the world was was fulfilled. Isn't it amazing how the people around us often see our strengths before we recognize them in ourselves? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was the same for me with coaching. My own coach. I'm telling him what's happening in my day and my week. This was many years ago. He's like, you know, you're a coach, right? I was like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. So I think that's amazing. I am curious throughout all of this, and, and I'd love you very quickly to tell folks what Clarity TV is. But before you get there, throughout all of this process, what's been the biggest struggle for you? <laughs> I'm going to laugh. Uh, no. The, the biggest struggle uh it's probably the biggest struggle that everybody listening to this or everybody in business, especially in business for themselves, have is my positioning and clarifying my message. Let, I me, feel let that. me explain. The cobbler's kids have no shoes, cobbler, man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the truth is that, and this is, if you're listening to this, just hear me out in that I have been what I have friends call me the clarity queen since I was two years old. I've always been that person that would sort things out, make like understand communication so that we could come to an agreement. Like I was always that person. And when I started my coaching business and I'm a coach and I said, okay, what is my thing? What is that? Like, yes, we are all coaches, right? But each one of us bring a personality and experience and skill set that's unique to us. Yep. And I, I could. That's I could why list. there are so many of us, and it, exactly. we all have work. Yes. Exactly. And I could list all of those things, but I couldn't make sense of it to say, okay, what? who does this make me? What is my, my little niche? And I started asking people, friends, my family, uh, clients, what is the thing that you will always get from me consistently? You'll never doubt that if you come to me, you're going to get this. And Everybody across the board said clarity. Yep. It's been there along, right under my nose. And I and I kind of shied away from it because I'm like, hey, who needs clarity? <laughs> like, Everybody. That's not yeah. a thing. Yeah, but in my <laughs> mind, because it's so to give it yeah. is so easy to me, it felt like cheating if I were to build a business with something that I literally would do for free all day long because I love it. And that's the whole point. And Those no of you, <laughs> we both just recently read or reread um, the, Big Leap the Big Leap by yeah. Gay <laughs> Hendricks, but that's exactly what it talks about. Like you, you have to find the thing that you would literally do all day for free, because that's your gift. Your like that's maker. your zone yeah. of genius. That's your money maker. That's what people are looking for from you. And the other thing that I think is so important is that all good coaches need good coaches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, and I'm not saying because that you, as a sales pitch. Like, no matter what you do, if you're yep. good at whatever you do, find somebody who's good at something else to help you be better at what you do. Because we, I, and I say it in my intro videos, um, we cannot give ourselves a good haircut. No way. So we all need coaches, whether you're a coach or not, because you need a mirror through which to reflect on yourself. Yep. And 
come up with, with whatever needs to shift or transform. Absolutely. I love that. We can't give ourselves a haircut. I dig, yeah. I dig that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. What would you say out of well, all? Well, of- you can, but I don't recommend. It. Yeah, <laughs> you can, but it's it's not going to work. It's not going to yeah. look good. I, I'm with you on that. What would you say has been the biggest pleasant surprise? A, uh, knowing that the people that I support support me, like yeah. my clients. Yeah, that, I that love has that. Been- Amazing, amazing. B, oh my God, business is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which those of you who are like maybe new to starting a business or are struggling <laughs> to get yourself to a monthly income that can provide for your family, you may be going, there's nothing fun about this. But yeah, when you hit that zone me. of genius, it is fun. It is absolutely fun and fascinating. And and how much fun it can be when you stop the resistance and the self-judgment. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I literally just sold one part of my business in December, which I'm like, what? Like, I said, I, I, I don't know if you and I have talked about it. Actually, you might not even know this. I don't know. Like, I'm a service business. I'm basically a coach. Yeah. And I'm like, I've never heard of a coach selling the business or a part of the business. And, I, and, and yet, I just did. And I'm in transition with them. I have a contract with them to get this part of this business set up under their brand. They're multi, multi-eight figure business. That's so cool. Congratulations. I Thank mean, that's you. the dream. Build it, yeah, sell it, build and, something new. Well, and the truth is that I only sold one part. So my core business, Masters in Clarity and the coaching that I do, isn't touched. This is one done for you service that we had under the agency. Basically, we 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 were we do research, reach out, and and get people on stages so that they can be right. seen and raise their visibility. Um, that's what we're doing, Mass and Clarity. Now that is being moved to another company, and I am overseeing the setup of the team there. That is really really cool. And we're turning up the volume. And literally, the pilot just started in January with thirty clients, and we're looking to enroll two hundred and fifty by May. Well, I hope I can be one of them. Oh, yeah. We can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Tell everybody about Clarity TV. So Clarity TV was born, I don't know, like two years ago. It's it's still fairly greenish. Um, <laughs> and I don't, and I, and I was, everything I do, I do it for fun, to be honest. I didn't wrap a lot of shoots in this Clarity TV, at least not in the get-go. Now it's getting a little bit more structured in the okay. last six months. But the goal of Clarity TV is to interview people that are doing it, that are that are that have journeyed through their own clarity to be taking some kind of action that has an impact. Uh, again, clarity, action, impact. Impact, yep, yep. And so I love that you actually asked me three words because I, I knew I had them. You have three. You're ready <laughs> um, to go. <laughs> Yes. So I am super excited that I got to be a guest on Clarity TV. So if anybody wants to check it out, we will put the links in the show notes. Um, Mm -hmm. But I love what you're doing, everything you're doing. And I just, you have such a magnetic energy, Dolores. And I felt it right away, really connected with me. We sat at a table together Mm -hmm. the very first morning at the conference. And Mm -hmm. there was just something about you that felt... um, really attractive to me, uh, emotionally yeah. attractive. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't want my partner to worry. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not leaving for I'm not asking Dolores <laughs> to leave her husband. It's all good. <laughs> I'm curious, do you have any self care rituals or daily mm. grounding rituals that help you stay in this clarity action impact space? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Um, I, I would love to answer, uh, a, 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 like a supermodel routine of this. <laughs> it's like, um, no, but I can tell you my, 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 the things that I do do, and sometimes it's not consistent. So, a couple of things. Uh, I mean, I have four children. Uh, me too. Um, so, I so feel you, you know, there's that. a lot of things that you wish you could do uh, meditation for 30 minutes every morning. Like, no, where's my shirt? Uh, where are my shoes? Put like, your shoes on. Tie the shoes. Off. The shoes have it's, to be it's tied. Minus, it's minus 50 degrees. No shorts in mm. January. Anyway, um, <laughs> so there's a couple of things. Number one, and this, I mean, I'm saying it a lot. It might not be important. Like my phone, li- my phone and my computer live downstairs. I love I, that. They just don't that go to second. They don't go so to second important. floor. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. It's not that I had to focus on that. This is just 
what I do. My phone is not at my hip all day, although when I'm working, it's at my desk, so I'm attuned. In the weekends, I don't. I am very careful with my evenings and weekends. I do not Good work. For you. Um, Boundaries. My weekend. Yeah. And I have tried all kinds of exercises. I've tried to do yoga and bar and everything and whatever. And I've learned that what makes me happiest <laughs> is fresh air. And I walk. I walk yeah. pretty much every morning. I, we have a puppy now. So nice. I have to walk the puppy. And we have made some decisions in a few years. For example, I became a ski instructor last year. Just why not? Sure. Why not? I'm not doing it this year because it was a big time commitment. But I will take on little uh, adventure is one of my top values. So I'm always looking for ways to be in an adventure. I love that. And that doesn't surprise me because all of the the ways that you move through your life and your business are so adventurous Mm -hmm. that... I can see that being a, a core value for you. And I love yeah. that so And, and I much. didn't know that until I went into coaching training and I was asked that. And uh, you laugh. But when I found that out, this was almost seven or eight years ago. My kids were very m- much, much younger. Mm-hmm. I was in the thick of it, thick of homework and lunch boxes and all that. And there was nothing that looked like adventure in my life at that moment or so I thought. So I decided that it was time to honor my adventure value. And I moved my family to Argentina because why not? (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Which we did. Um, My goodness. And and the other little thing here is that I am an avid fan of Julia Cameron, the artist, Julie Cameron, the artist way. Yeah. The artist way is wonderful. Yeah. And I literally just bought, so it it grounds me. So when I, I'm in a new phase or like the start of a new year or or I'm feeling a little bit all over the place, I will go back to that. That's like my go-to thing. It's been my go-to thing for many, many years now. And I literally just bought this um, Artist Way journal on, on on Amazon. Of course, I could use any journal, but I just wanted something special. It's 10 yeah. bucks. And I'm back to morning pages. I love that. And so that anchors me. So I would love to say I'm consistent with morning pages every day. I'm not. But it's definitely something that is my go-to when I'm feeling a little kind of yeah. flighty. That's so cool. Uh, and, you know, and I, I've i written two books on gratitude. They're books and journals. And I do believe that daily gratitude is absolutely important. Yep. And I list gratitude. I have a, several accountability gratitude situations. I don't think you have to necessarily do it every day for it to be mm-hmm. impactful or that that's the only way that it can be impactful. But having it as a space to go back to, although with gratitude, you, at least saying it out loud, which I think yeah. you probably do. Whether you sit down and write out your morning pages, the things that you're saying and feeling, you speak life to. We Yeah, and that's something that's important. So two points here, Heather, that I think are important is when we start putting judgment on our self-care routines, it, yep. you, you just die. Like if when we're judging whether we're doing it often enough, or well enough, or whatever, then then forget it. And then the other part of the gratitude, one of the things that we started, or I started being more conscious of it lately in my house, and literally last night, my 14-year-old has been working on a science project. And last night, I'm in bed, and he's talking with my husband, and he, say, he said, and I'm quote, quote, he said, Thank you, Papa, for helping me out with this data processing here. We were doing some fancy stuff. It made all the difference. Mm. And I was listening to it. And like, how many 14-year-olds thank their parents, mother or father, for helping them on a project? They might thank them in 20 years when they have their own kids. But at 14, not many. And so I'm like, yes, yes, something in the house is working. (laughs) I or not, that. or maybe he's brilliant. I don't know. No. But it's just, <laughs> or a combination of that. But I just was so touched yeah. that the fact that gratitude is in my home, whether we practice it all day or not, yeah. it's there. I love Otherwise, that. my 14-year-old would have never said that. That's so cool. Yeah. So. I, I My oldest, I have been editing her history papers and her history professor or teacher, she's in high school, is much more strict than her English teacher. And mm. so she's... Um, She's always like, it really helps me, Mama. I'm really glad. Thank you for that. So it is good to see that taking action. I love it. Dolores, how do you celebrate when things go like like that? Like, you you know, recognizing that the work you're doing at home makes a difference or anything big, small. How do you like to celebrate wins? 
Huh, good question. Well, I share it with you. That's once we uh, celebrated, and it happened that my husband was home earlier today because he's a, he's now he's changed careers. He's a physics high school teacher, and we were having lunch, and I mentioned that, and I kind of we just talked about it like in a grateful way, in a in an acknowledgement way, if you want. I think acknowledgement. I mean, the truth yeah. is, uh, speaking out loud is the best way I celebrate. I like, I, yeah. I mean, I'm not one. To party that I don't know. I, mean, it's not, <laughs> I, I, I think speaking out loud and sharing is a beautiful way to celebrate. I think that yeah. that's when I uh, or I will. Um, yeah, I will. Yeah, speaking out loud and sharing it with someone. That's so cool. Yeah, I re- I really value that, and I I don't think a lot of people recognize that as a form of celebration. And so I love that we were able to share that with people yeah. Yeah. because what it does, which is why I love celebration, is it causes you to slow down acknowledge and, and reflect. Yeah. yeah and that's, absolutely. that is celebration. That is so great. Yeah. Dolores, last question. I wish we, I just love your energy. We could talk for a really <laughs> long time, but what is your favorite charitable organization to support? Yes. Yeah, so there's a few, but one that comes up to my mind and that I was actually, I worked for them for seven years. I was the director of their online learning platform. It's called Nifty, N-F-T-E. Um, I think they changed their name a little bit, but it's basically National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Okay. And it 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 was born from Steve Mariotti, and basically, he works to help high school students, especially in kind of uh, challenging neighborhoods or or some kind of uh, of social or economic challenge, and help the kids learn the basics of entrepreneurship as a way to stay engaged with school and to potentially start and run a business. Yeah, that is excellent. So it's very aligned with Yeah, the yeah. I think that is so important and so impactful and just such a gift. So folks listening, use this as an opportunity to get to know the organization better. If you have something to share, time, money, shares, find a way to give them a little bit of love, whatever that is, and they'll be our charity of the week. So thank you so much for sharing them with us, Dolores. Well, this yes, is the you time- you can find them at n- nfte.com. Okay, excellent. We'll have links to all of that in the show notes okay. as well. As long as as well as anything else we've mentioned in the show, we're going to link in the show notes. So make sure you visit them because they have all the goodies in it. This is the point in the show where I get to ask you to repeat your three words. But but more than in in two and a half years of of podcasting, you're the only guest that said your three words multiple times throughout the interview. We, which I, we weaved I love. them. <laughs> we weaved them in. Um, but your three words are, are clarity, action, and impact. And I'm going to say them instead of having you say them because you've done such a beautiful job of explaining that throughout the conversation. Mm-hmm. And it is, those are the three words that move you through every yeah. element of your life and business. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah. It helps it. that I have it in my coffee mug uh, <laughs> next to my logo, which I will send you one. <laughs> yes, please send me one. Well, I'm laughing because I'm currently drinking my coffee out of my mug that says Choose Bravely, which is my oh, podcast logo. So <laughs> it's perfect. There we go. That is so awesome. Dolores, this has been so much fun. Thank you very, very much for being here and sharing this story with all of our brave listeners. Thank you, Heather. Okay, you guys, you never know what you're really fully capable of until you push yourself to the limit. And I'd like to know, how are you pushing yourself into bravery today? Give us a call at 312-646-0205 and let us know because we are excited to help support one another as we do these difficult things, as we say, what's the worst thing that can happen? As we really challenge ourselves to, to do just one more thing to find that level of success and happiness that we're really striving for. I love having you with me week after week. Thank you so much. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review it, share it with friends, and consider joining us on Patreon, where you can help us build this build this brave movement day after day. That is patreon.com slash brave files. I promise we have a level of support that will work for you. This is Heather Vickery reminding you today and always to go out and choose bravely. The Brave Files is proudly supported by Audible. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, you're sure to love listening to your favorite books on Audible. Get your free 30-day trial complete with a credit for a free audiobook download today simply by visiting audibletrial.com slash the brave files. Again, that's visiting audibletrial.com slash the brave files. 
You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. To learn more about the show, find our show notes, or get some great bonus content, visit thebravefilespodcast.com. And we'd love to know what you think. You can give us a call at 312-646-0205. Let us know your thoughts on the episode, the show in general, or maybe share with us how you're out choosing bravely. This episode is brought to you by Vickery & Co. Success Coaching, coaching that helps you maintain a life well-lived and a business well-run. Learn more at vickeryandco.com. Our music is produced by Matt Lewis. Follow him on Instagram at mattmmusic or visit his website, theunionband.com. We couldn't do any of this without our extraordinary audio engineer, Andrew Olson. Learn more about him and check out his work at findandrewolson.com. And special thanks to our associate producer, Kim Statler. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you next week.